Welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Melanie Moosen, who is in Belgrade, Montana. How are you doing, Melanie? I'm doing well. Excellent, excellent. And, and Melanie is an uh, insurance and finance writer at clearassurance.com. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today is how real estate agents can boost their sales. So Melanie, this is this is a timely uh, topic given the changes in the real estate market, uh, because let's face it, over the last while with the, with the boom, um, it's probably been so easier to sell than ever, and now we're coming into this. Uh, we're coming into a bit of a, a clawback. It's going to be a little harder. So real selling skills are are going to be um, paramount uh, in this market. I mean, we've already seen Fortune is saying your new home sales are going to be down twenty two percent, existing sales down seventeen percent. Um, but uh, so. What do you say to to those realtors and maybe ones who've come into the market even like relatively recently who it's all been seemed pretty easy and now they're going to be faced with a, a lot of challenges? How can they maximize their sales and how can they put them in their, themselves in the best position possible? Well, you're absolutely right. We are going from we just went from a super easy time to sell to uh, getting into a more challenging time thanks to interest rates and other factors. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you've if you're a real estate agent and you've only experienced where all you had to do was list a house and it sold, I mean, that's mm -hmm. literally in some markets, all that was needed about a year ago, even six months ago. And then once the interest rate started rising, it got a lot harder. So now it's time to up your game. And there are so many really great strategies to help you boost your sales. So um, one is your um, marketing, like email marketing, um, content marketing, social media marketing, all these ways to get your name out there, present yourself as the expert so that when somebody thinks, you know, I might want to start looking for another home, they're going to, your name's going to come to mind because they've seen you around. Um, mm -hmm. They've seen you on social media. They've seen you. Um, they've seen your your posts, your blog posts, and um, so you you want to get your name out there through um, through that marketing. That's that's one way yeah. to do it. Yeah, and just on that note, I mean, I think uh, you know, given given the fluctuations in the housing market, like people will be out there looking for information. So if you're if you're a realtor, I mean, I check, there's a couple of realtors around here. I check their blogs because they give, you know, because let's face it, like real estate nationally, real estate locally, you know, there's, there can be big differences, obviously. Um, so to your point, if you're out there supplying information to people who are looking for information, as you say, then you are more likely to be in the running when they come to want to work with you. Right. Um, I, where I live, um, I live in Belgrade. We're right next to Bozeman, Montana. It's a very competitive, expensive market. And so, you know, that is kind of something that um, is interesting to a lot of people. So like my parents live in the, on the East Coast and they're kind of fascinated by the real estate market where I am because I'm kind mm -hmm. of, I'm very interested in it. And I follow it closely. And so when I see a good piece of content that um, shows how the median sales price has increased or decreased over the past month, and um, whenever something catches my eye, I will share it on my social, social media. And so, um, and other people do the same thing. And so when you have, when you're able to capture what makes your area unique, um, sometimes you'll get advertising from people that maybe aren't even in the market, but are just, mm -hmm. um, they're kind of like, this is something interesting about where I live. And it might not even be housing related. It might, it might have to do with the activities around or right. you know, just something that's uh, special to your region. And if you can market that content so that other people will share it for you, they're basically, basically giving you free advertisements. Um, 
that's that's going to help that's going to help mm-hmm. draw business and increase sales. Yeah, yeah, because especially because when you can promote yourself as a local expert, as you say, not just real estate, but, you know, entertainment, schools, all of these other things. And just as you say, anything interesting going on in the neighborhood, then um, that's obviously going to going to help build your reputation. Um, Let me ask you about another phenomenon. This 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 always happens when you get a change in in market conditions in the real estate market. And you would know this better than I obviously. But. So when you come off a really hot market, so maybe my house was worth X two months ago, right? In my mind, it's still worth X, even though it's not. I can't sell it for that right now. So how, when you work, when when you, when realtors like you said, when you work with clients, how do you help transition from a booming market to maybe not so booming market? Because let's face it, we get hung up on what the highest value of our house was, even if it was only fleeting. Yes, totally. And it can be a really hard pill to swallow to find out that your, you know, $800,000 house is really only going to sell for $700,000 four months later. It's, mm-hmm. you know, the buyers want, I mean, sellers want to sell their house for the highest price possible because that's going to help them when they um, go to purchase a new house. And so it can just be very difficult to for them to understand that, well, my, my neighbor's house sold for this six months. Mm-hmm. So mine should be more like just think that houses continually. It. So I think, um, real estate agents need to, to explain, I mean, people, people get it, but sometimes you need what a, a big difference. So if, if a buyer has a month at a three percent interest rate, they could easily afford a, you know, maybe they could afford a seven hundred thousand dollar house, and then with interest rates at six percent, all of a sudden they can only afford a five hundred fifty thousand dollar house. And so to show them at a set budget how much can go to a house and how much can go and how much has to go to interest, that's going to show them that. Um, buyers in the same looking with the same budget aren't able to afford their house that for the same the same house for the same price that they could with a lower interest yeah. rate and um and so how that overall brings the market down um brings the prices of houses down just because the people wanting to buy them can't afford um mm-hmm. the same even though their budget might be the same they can't afford as much house yeah and i think that's a and i think that's a really good point again that you're raising here is being a a resource to educate as well whether it's buyers or or sellers like this what you just outlined there is you know let's face it a lot of realtors would just go oh well this is what the market is now here this is what it costs you have actually gone through and explained why if you put the house on the market at X amount, you know, the 800,000 rather than the 700,000, how you may eliminate the majority of the buyers for that house. And you may, you know, may sit on the market, but it's all about educating. Cause then, I mean, once you start to explain things and it makes logical sense to people, then they're more likely to accept it as opposed to, well, no, the, well, you know, price have just gone down. Right. And they're, they're not going to like, you know, if you just say, well, this is what it is. They might mm-hmm. think, well, you're underpricing my house just so that you can sell it faster. Yeah. I mean, they you need to be explained to them the reason for, especially for things that they are not going to like. So, um, yeah, that education mm-hmm. is really essential. Yeah. And then how do you and then uh, how can how can realtors, uh, you know, maybe they have people in their pipeline who were considering buying or considering selling. And now they're obviously spooked and um, they're putting it everything on hold, but their circumstances that were driving them to want to sell maybe haven't changed. So how do you, how, how is, how is real estate salespeople can you help people to see whether putting it on hold is actually the right decision for them or they should move forward? Well, the nice thing, if you have property to sell and you're looking to buy is that what's affecting you is also affecting the rest of the market. So even though you might not be able to sell your home for as high as you could a year ago, you're going to be able to find homes that cost less 
than you could mm -hmm. a year ago. So that's important. An important factor to remember is that your home value may have dropped, but so have the houses, your perspective home value um, of a house that you're considering buying. So that that does work in your favor as a seller. Um, and so I think real estate agents should um, remind prospective customers about that. And also just keep on um, letting them know with text message, email, look, I found this property. It looks like what you're looking for. It's in your price range. Um, just a low pressure, just, hey, check these out. And just so that they, um, so that those prospective buyers, um, just maybe they'll, maybe they'll get, uh, maybe they'll see something and be like, you know what, that is what I want. And let's reevaluate instead of being afraid because of the interest rates, let's mm -hmm. reevaluate where we are and maybe reconsider. Yeah, and and again, like I uh, like I mentioned a moment ago, I mean, I think this is all um, this is all hinged around like how much you are willing to invest the time and effort to educate uh, and educate yourself to begin with, obviously, and then educate your prospective um, buyers and sellers because you know let's you know let's face it, I mean, selling selling or buying homes is stressful at the best of times when you're in a strange market or you're in a transitional market and we don't really know um, we don't know what the future holds, uh, you know, then it becomes even more people become even more skittish. So I think that whole piece of being able to sort of calm people down and cut through the noise because let's face it, they're just getting headlines, aren't they off the news because that's all people read anymore is just headlines. Yes, that is so accurate. And so that's where you as a that's where somebody as a real estate agent can kind of come through with a little bit um, more of the truth, especially of the local market, because a lot of times mm -hmm. those headlines yeah. are kind of giving you a national and overall picture, but not what's going on in your neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that's the other thing, as you said, is that uh, is then to help people understand local versus national, like what how the local market performs as opposed to to the, the, the overall national, as you said, that the headlines, uh, because uh, there's other things, too, isn't there? I mean, when you educate buyers or sellers, I mean, for instance, like where I live, it's it's there's no more supply, right? You can't build, you physically can't build any more houses here. So there's a, there's an inbuilt kind of supply demand issue there that keeps the housing market sort of at a fairly high rate. Yes. And so that's going to be, you know, that is going to make the realtors that know the market are going to mm -hmm. have the edge in, um, reaching customers. You know, you can't just, you have to do your research. Even if you've been a real estate agent for 20 years, um, you know, you're going to learn a lot from the experience and from doing it. But if you're not studying where the trends are going, you're going to miss out on sales because um, you're just not expecting where the market's going to go. And so um, continuing your education as a real estate agent is going to help you to prepare for um, you're just going to have a little bit of a glimpse into the future um, of what could happen. And you'll be able to prepare prospective clients for changes coming. And it's just going to give you an edge to um, mm -hmm. keep up on continuing research education in your local market. And that's for different types of buyers. Like we've seen a lot of, uh, uh, real estate investors come into the market over the last while, like buying. A, so uh, do you see that continuing? And is that another thing that realtors need to look at is that there are different types of, of customers. It's not just like families or people buying business, uh, buying homes. It's also there's in, there's investment, uh, there's investment uh, folks getting in on the act too. Yes. And um, so, you know, some realtors are kind of focused towards families and they mm -hmm. want to see like, oh, families get into the starter home. And what's happening is, especially those starter homes, condos, townhouses, those are what um, investors are looking for because they tend to be lower cost, but still bring in a high rental income. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so it's, this, this is a, a big shift from um, dealing with families to dealing with investors 
And if you want to increase your sales and grow your market, you have to be prepared to work with clients that maybe you would, maybe you picture yourself as being this, doing this good deed of helping mm -hmm. families get started in a new house. Um, but you need to broaden your scope so that you can reach the people that are that are willing to buy it, whether that be a family or whether that be an investor. And um, and you, if you've only worked, like let's say that you have only worked with families, it might be time to start building connections with investors because um, they're going to help drive your business in the future. Yeah, and obviously, in the you know, as the market goes through some fluctuations, investors are going to see opportunities. So that might be, as you say, I mean, if you're not looking at them and you're not uh, and you're not engaging with them, you could be missing out on that. You could be losing out a lot of of business uh, of, of business to them. And um, so, do you see this uh, when when you go into a little downturn like this? Um, you know, obviously, uh, the the investors are looking for bargains and looking for that too. Um, so, does the market then get competitive at the other end? You know, like uh, when people are trying to buy things for the cheapest they can. Um, it does, especially because an investor, um, oftentimes, they are able to pay with cash or mm -hmm. or to purchase with um, a high percentage of cash and just um, finance a small amount of the loan. And so, mm -hmm. interest rates don't impact them as much as somebody who is financing the majority of, um, of a home. And so, um, so they are ready to jump on this opportunity of housing prices coming down because they don't have to worry about that part of their budget going to interest, especially if they're able to pay with cash. And so, um, so yeah, so, so they, is that going to push the market down? Probably not because there's other investors that are looking, you know, there's still a competition mm -hmm. between investors, yeah. but they're definitely going to try to capitalize on, um, on these lower priced, the, the housing prices coming down. Yeah. And I guess that's another good point also, even for, for regular buyers, like if you have a lot of cash to put down you know if you're not if you're putting down way more than 20 percent or whatever or you have it or you can even find your way to being a cash buyer well then this is a good market for you definitely this is if you can if you can do a mostly cash offer this is the break that you're looking for i mean once again you're still um if you're selling you're still dealing with lower sure. prices but um the interest rates are not going to have that negative impact on you. So you can really take advantage of the lower priced houses when you're looking to buy. Okay, great. Uh, so what's the last piece of advice you'd give to real estate agents uh, to, to, to be able to maximize and optimize what they're doing, especially during this time of flux? I think you need to sometimes think outside the box. And if an idea comes to you, run with it. Um, I There is a... A TV personality that I followed. He um, he used to do a morning show in the Twin Cities in Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, and um, and he's been featured on national shows several times. He's he's hilarious. He's fun to follow. Well, he has recently teamed up with a real estate group in um, Minnesota, and they've hired him obviously to um, do videos and he's fun. He's just, he's mm -hmm. fun to watch. I watch all of his house tours because he's hilarious. And I think how brilliant of that real estate group to hire him to do that. Cause he's reaching this broad audience. He's showing these houses. People like to watch maybe people, people that aren't even in the market. And I just think what a great idea that they, that they saw that opportunity and um, jumped on it. And so maybe that's not the right move for your real estate um, business, but something like that, where you're just thinking of something different that's going to give you more publicity and help you reach people that you probably wouldn't have reached. I mean, I'm not looking at properties in the Twin Cities. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't see those properties yeah. from any other source, but I'm seeing because I follow him because he's hilarious. Right. No, I think those are great points. And I think it's now is the time to get creative. And the good thing is you can get creative much more easily today than you ever could in the past. Uh, so this is great. Listen, all of Melanie's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Well, I write 
about um, finance and insurance. And um, it is a lot of fun to communicate um, with people. I really love how insurance can um, help people protect their financial stability. And so I'm really passionate about helping people find the right insurance for their business, for their personal life, and all of that. Fantastic. Yeah, well, go check it out and go check out uh, go check out Melanie's work. As I said, all of Melanie's information will be below this video. All right, but well, thanks again, Melanie. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.